For over a decade, I gave my wife the white picket fence life she dreamed of. Yet she chose for the thrill, in the arms of my shameless uncle. Our daughter's drawing brought the affair to light, but the truth shattered our family, turning my primal rage, into a laser beam of focus. Not only aimed towards divorce, but also to let her live a life, full of regret. This exclusive episode has it all. From ugly lies being exposed by the devastating truth of a kid's drawing, to betraying family bonds for cheap thrills. From the downfall due to infidelity, to achieving God-tier level victory. Spoil yourself, and stick till the end, because justice is served so cold, you might start to pity the like button, after smacking it into oblivion. This revenge story, will definitely be upsetting to cheaters. Let me start where it began, and jump straight into it. At the time, I was a young 38-year-old, married for 12 years to my wife Elena, who was 36. We have four kids together, three boys and one girl. I'll take you with me to what my headspace was, as I can remember it so vividly. It was another beautiful day in our small town, and I was exhausted as I walked back from work, yet feeling like the luckiest man alive. At that point in life, my business finally started to flourish, I had a beautiful wife, Elena, and four amazing kids. I had come a long way from my rough childhood, but I won't go into that. Looking back, I was just proud to be a loving dad and husband. I remember opening the door, hearing the laughter of my children. My four-year-old, Lucy, came running up to me, holding a drawing in her hands. Look, Daddy. Proudly showing me her masterpiece. It's Uncle Dave and Mommy, in a car. I chuckled at first, thinking it was just another one of her innocent drawings. He was the youngest brother of my dad's family, 42 years old and we taught our kids to just call him uncle. I couldn't shake off a nagging feeling in my gut. Why would she draw them together like that? It was a drawing of my wife and my uncle Dave in a car, but they were never in a car together. At first, I decided to brush it off and pretend nothing was wrong, thinking it was best not to overthink things. Lucy, my four-year-old, had always been known for her wild imagination. I remember the time she told me a story about a magical dragon that lived in our backyard and ate all her vegetables, so she wouldn't have to. With her creative mind, it wasn't too far-fetched to think she had just made up a silly drawing. But as the days went by, I couldn't shake off that nagging feeling in my gut. I started noticing changes in Elena, like her becoming more distant and irritable. She seemed preoccupied, and her once warm embrace now felt cold and distant. I couldn't help but feel insecure, wondering if something was going on behind my back. A month or so later we organized a family reunion at our home. Your basic family barbecue, where both Elena and Dave were present. This was the day my suspicions grew stronger. We all mixed and everyone chatted with anyone other than their own spouses. The kids were playing and I joined my sister and a cousin. During that moment I look left and see that Uncle Dave and Elena seem to have found a way to be near each other. I observed Elena and Dave more closely, and that particular encounter between them caught my attention. I noticed them standing near the edge of the garden, seemingly lost in a deep conversation. Their faces were close, and their body language appeared unusual for just casual family talk. As I approached, I saw Dave place his hand on Elena's shoulder, giving it a gentle squeeze, while Elena smiled and looked down, blushing. That moment struck me as odd and made me feel uneasy. It was as if they shared a special bond that I, as her husband, wasn't a part of. Their connection seemed to go beyond the normal family ways, and it made me question what was truly going on between them. It's one of those moments where your senses just tell you something is up. Because when I stood in front of them, they stopped their conversation and just stared me in the eyes. While Dave also had this proud gaze on his face. It was almost as if they shared a secret bond that I wasn't a part of. Feeling unsure of what to do next, I considered my options. I decided that I needed more evidence before taking any action, so I chose to continue gathering information and keeping a close eye on the situation. Still at the family reunion, I decided to ask around a bit about how Dave was doing and what he had been up to lately. I chatted with several family members, and they all mentioned that Dave was still unemployed. One cousin even jokingly remarked that he knows Dave was spending his time hunting ladies full time. No one seemed to mention anything about his relationship with Elena, but the unnatural interaction with Dave and his lifestyle only fueled my suspicions. In the following days, I looked for more clues and any inconsistencies in their stories. I started paying attention to phone calls, texts, and their whereabouts. I knew that if something was truly happening, it was only a matter of time before the truth would reveal itself. 
A few days after the reunion, I had a hunch that Dave might have visited my house while I was at work. It was based on a comment Elena had made about Dave stopping by to pick up his watch he had left behind during the barbecue. I asked Elena about the watch, because I found it strange. She said. Yes, his watch. He forgotten about it when he put it away from the smoke from the barbecue, I guess. Okay, that's kinda weird but actually believable because I've seen others do it. Nonetheless, I decided to ask my friendly neighbor, Tom, for a favor. I told him that I thought someone had been messing with our yard, and I was wondering if he could show me the footage from his security camera, to see if it caught anything suspicious. I gave him the time frame and Tom, being the helpful guy he was, agreed without hesitation. As we sat down and looked through the footage, I noticed something that made my heart sink. On that specific date, Dave was seen entering our house during my working hours. I have to admit, I work a lot and my working hours are like a workaholics, but it was around 10 in the morning. Elena told the truth. But when we fast forward the footage, Dave doesn't come out. I ask Tom to have brief control over the screen and when I forward it for about 3 hours, I see Dave walking out. He had been inside for over 3 hours, and it was on a weekday when Elena was supposed to be home alone. This new information strengthened my suspicions, but I knew I needed solid evidence before confronting anyone. It's my family, it's my life. It can't be so. I went into a tunnel of bad thoughts, but Tom snapped me out of it. Tom apologized, and told me he would let me know if he knows or sees anything. I was vague about what my concerns were, but I could keep my cool enough for him to ask no questions and thanked him for his help. Feeling overwhelmed and unsure about how to proceed, I decided to hire a private investigator to look into Dave's activities. I needed someone who could gather evidence discreetly and professionally. After some research, I found an investigator and explained my situation to him. The private investigator, a seasoned professional, warned me that he might not be able to find anything concrete, as he suggested only tailing Dave. But he assured me that he would do his best to uncover the truth. Over the next few weeks, the private investigator kept me updated on his findings. He told me that Dave was frequently traveling within the town, which was strange considering he had no job and seemed to be quite busy. The investigator also found out that Dave was driving two different cars and often parked near a creek close to my house. In addition, he tracked Dave to a motel near the next big city. I couldn't believe my ears when the investigator told me about the motel. He said that on one occasion, he saw Dave entering a room at the motel. 30 minutes later, Elena arrived and entered the same room. The shock and hurt I felt were indescribable. Despite my suspicions, a part of me had still hoped that I was wrong. But now, the truth was staring me right in the face. As the reality of the situation sank in, my feelings of betrayal and anger grew stronger. I couldn't fathom how Elena, the woman I married and the mother of my children, could do this to me. The life we built together felt like a sham, and the thought of her lying to me every day made my blood boil. And Dave, my family member who had watched me grow up, was now the man responsible for tearing my family apart. He knew where we came from. He was supposed to be someone I could trust, but instead, he stabbed me in the back. The hatred and fury I felt towards both of them were all consuming. I planned a family dinner at my sister's house to expose their betrayal. I made sure that the children would not be present, as I didn't want them to witness the ugliness that was about to unfold. I specifically asked my sister to host the dinner and to keep my intentions a secret. She hesitated, but, ultimately agreed to help me, trusting that I had my reasons. Due to the unusual request of having a dinner without kids, not everyone could make it. My sister, who was in on the plan but didn't know the specifics, told everyone that she had a special message for them, which is why she made the request. This helped to gather most of the family members, and they were all curious about what my sister had to say. As the day of the dinner approached, I felt a dark cloud hanging over me. I knew that I was about to turn our lives upside down, but I couldn't let Elena and Dave get away with what they had done. The deep sense of betrayal, fueled my determination to make them pay. As the family gathered at my sister's house, I could feel the tension in the air. Everyone was curious about the special message my sister had supposedly prepared. Little did they know that it was me who had a shocking revelation in store for them. I tried my best to appear calm and collected, but inside, I was a storm of emotions. 
The dinner began with the usual small talk and laughter, but I couldn't fully participate. My mind was focused on the moment when I would expose Elena and Dave. As the evening progressed, I decided that it was finally time to reveal the truth. I stood up, my heart pounding in my chest, and cleared my throat to get everyone's attention. The room fell silent, all eyes on me. I know my sister said she had a special message for everyone tonight, but the truth is, it's me who has something important to say. I paused for a moment, gathering my strength. I have recently discovered that my wife, Elena, has been having an affair with Dave. Gasps filled the room, and shocked faces turned to stare at Elena and Dave. They both looked like deer caught in headlights, their faces pale and eyes wide with fear. My sister, who had trusted me without knowing the details, looked as shocked as everyone else but didn't interrupt. As you can imagine, this has been a devastating blow to me and our family. I just couldn't keep this secret any longer, and I thought you all deserved to know the truth. My voice trembled with emotion, but I managed to keep it steady. I have been working with a lawyer, and I will be filing for divorce. I wanted to do this here, with all of you as witnesses, so there would be no more lies or secrets. At this moment, Dave suddenly stood up and tried to walk towards me, but my father swiftly stepped in front of him, his face red with anger. You sit down and wait for your turn to speak. He snapped at Dave, who hesitated before going back to his seat. The room was still in shock, but I decided to drive the point home. I pulled out pictures of Elena and Dave entering the same motel room on different occasions, with date stamps clearly visible. The evidence was undeniable. Some family members began to murmur their support and condolences, my mother began to cry, while others couldn't find the words, and simply stared at Elena and Dave with a mixture of disappointment and anger. As the shock settled in, the reactions of Elena and Dave couldn't be more different. While Dave immediately turned red with anger, calling me names and even threatening me, Elena just froze and stared at the can of water in front of her. I remained calm, keeping my eyes locked on Dave's, unwilling to back down. Then, unexpectedly, Elena finally spoke. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She whispered, her voice barely noticeable over the noise of the family members. My father's face had turned from anger to disappointment as he turned to Dave. How long has this been going on? He demanded. Dave said. Three years. His eyes filled with a twisted sort of triumph, the same look he gave me when he patted my wife during the family barbecue. And she'll choose me, over you. Because she needs a real man like me, to show her what she's been missing. The room exploded with emotion as my family members started to yell and push Dave towards the door. I could feel the anger coursing through my veins as I watched him go, knowing that he had betrayed me and my family in the worst possible way. As the chaos died down and Dave was bounced out of the house, the focus in the room shifted to Elena and me. My dad and a few family members started to gently guide people out of the dining room and into the living room, leaving just Elena, my sister, my dad, and a couple more family members with me. The room fell quiet as the door shut behind us. I could feel the anger and betrayal inside me, and it was a struggle to keep my emotions under control and I kept thinking about what Dave said. Three years. I didn't expect it to be that long. I started to feel way more angry and it showed in my voice when I asked Elena. What do you want, Elena? You didn't just do this to me. You did it to our kids too. It's true. I'm so sorry. I asked her, is that all? While my voice sounded calmer, but I guess it was clear that I became more angry, as my dad and sister stepped in to calm me down, while two of my female cousins sat with Elena. No, it's true, but it was two months. I will tell you everything, I'm so sorry. She begged for forgiveness and kept repeating how sorry she was, and that she could prove it was two months, but none of us were in the mood for it. It didn't matter, cheating is cheating. I told her we were going home, and that she could sleep at the motel while I stayed with the kids. I calmed down and just focused on the things that needed to be done. I apologized to my sister for not telling her beforehand, but everyone in the room understood why I had to do what I did. They told me they were there for me and the kids, and that they would do whatever they could to help us through this difficult time. One of my cousins offered to drive Elena to the motel, while another went to pick up her essentials from our home. It was a sobering end to what had started as a family dinner, but I knew that it was just the beginning of a long and painful journey ahead. Elena left the family dinner that night with one of my cousins, while another came with me to pick up her essentials from our home. 
As we were packing her things, I took out the suitcase I had prepared beforehand, which contained the divorce papers. I wasn't sure it had everything she needed, but it had all the essentials, plus the divorce papers. When my cousin brought the suitcase to the motel, she found Elena lying on the bed, crying and shaking. As she opened the suitcase to take out Elena's things, the divorce papers caught her eye, and she placed them on the nightstand. Elena saw them and immediately freaked out, yelling and screaming for forgiveness and begging my cousin to bring her back home. She said. It wasn't three years. It was two months, I did it but it was nothing. It meant nothing. After a while, she calmed down, and one of my cousins took the papers from her, gently explaining that it was something that needed to be done. Elena went totally silent and didn't say a word as they left her alone in the room. It was a difficult moment for all of us, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness and regret as I reflected on what had happened. But I knew that I had to stay strong for my kids and do what was best for all of us in the long run. After two nights of sleeping at the motel, Elena came back home. I waited for Elena with my sister, and when she arrived the kids saw her and they ran up to her, asking for hugs and kisses. It broke my heart to see them so happy to see their mom, especially considering what she had done. When we were alone as adults and my sister kept the kids occupied, we had a long talk about the situation. Elena looked exhausted, almost 10 years older than the last time I saw her. We agreed that she could stay at home with the kids for a little while, but we would sleep in separate rooms, and I would go through with the divorce. As the days passed by, Elena became more desperate in her attempts to win me back. She would cook my favorite meals, buy me little gifts, and constantly tell me how sorry she was. At first, I appreciated the effort, but it soon became clear that her actions were driven more by her own self-interest, than a genuine desire to make things right and just accept the divorce. One day, she even showed up at my workplace with a bouquet of flowers, trying to apologize in front of my co-workers. I was embarrassed and angry, as she had no right to interfere with my work. I thanked her for the gesture, but made it clear that it wasn't going to change anything. Another time, she tried to initiate physical intimacy, but I quickly shut it down. I couldn't imagine being with her in that way again, knowing what she had done with Dave. She was hurt by my rejection, but I couldn't bring myself to feel sorry for her. One morning, as I was passing through the laundry room, she cornered me, pleading for forgiveness. You don't know how much I need you. I can't be without you. With tears streaming down her face, she grabbed onto me and broke down, saying, I'll do anything, so we can stay together as a family. The children need us together as a strong family. I'll do anything to make it up. I couldn't bring myself to forgive her. I told her that I was only sorry for expecting too much from her, that loyalty and respect were too much to ask for after all those years. I let her know that I would have made different choices, if I had known beforehand that she could betray me and the family like she did. Elena shut down completely after that, and I went upstairs to continue my day, feeling a deep sense of sadness and regret for what had happened to our marriage. No matter how hard she tried to win me back, I couldn't shake off the feeling of betrayal and hurt that she had caused me. The final straw came when she tried to involve our kids in her attempts to win me back. She would tell them that she missed me, and wanted to be a family again. I was furious and told her to stop using our children as pawns in her games. Divorce was the only option, I'm not gonna fight to win a cheater in the end, even if it's the mother of my kids. Despite all her efforts, I remained firm in my decision, but I knew I couldn't live in the same house. Elena eventually realized that there was no changing my mind and moved out to an apartment. It was a difficult time for all of us. The divorce proceedings went smoothly. Elena agreed to all the terms without a fight, and we agreed on shared custody of the kids. However, most of the assets went to me, as it was an at-fault divorce. Worthy to mention, while the lawyers were present as we finalized everything, Elena addressed me directly. I'll go to therapy, what I did to our family is wrong. What I did to you is something I can't forgive myself. But I will be better and I will wait for you. If you join me or not, I will stay at your side from a distance, as you're the father of my children and the love of my life. You are truly, the only man for me." I simply nodded politely, hugged her and told her that we will take care of the children the best we could, but we can never be together again. As I hugged her and wanted to let go, I could feel the weight of her body fall further into my arms, just before she hugged me back really intensely, knowing it would be the last hug. I can't say I didn't care, she's the mother of my four children, they are the blessing of my life. As the divorce became final, and Elena moved out to her own apartment. 
we eventually adjusted to our new routines. I made sure she had everything she needed for the kids, so they would be cared for correctly when the kids are at her place. I didn't mind that part, as they are my children, but I know she thinks it's something she can use on the long term. That's wrong. I did notice she took most of the wedding pictures and pictures of us together, but I didn't care so much anymore. I just found it weird when I noticed them on the wall when I was over there, helping to set up her apartment, but thought it was a phase before she would be able to accept her fate. She tried. She tried so many times. Whenever I picked up the kids, or every single time when they had their birthday at my place. She would find reasons to keep me within eyesight. When family came, I made sure she was still welcome. I made sure people would treat her with respect for the children. She tells them. I'm working on building myself up to be with your dad. I made mistakes and I wasn't giving your dad what he deserved, I didn't know what I had. But the father you guys have, that's the only man, I can be with. When they ask what happened, she never gives specifics on the cheating. And I'm glad for that. Her life's focus was on the children, fitness at a ladies gym and a part-time job whenever the kids weren't at her place. As the kids became older, they kept telling me that their mother always speaks dreamy and hopeful about getting back together as a family. Two years after that, I started being more open-minded to date again without letting it be weird for the kids. But I wasn't ready to start dating again just yet, just meet new people. It took me a while to get over what had happened and I really didn't want anything negative enter our lives, that could affect the kids. The business was booming and took all my spare time when I wasn't with the kids, so it came as a surprise, when I did meet a lady, Jolene. I had to pick up one of my sons from a party, and got to chat up with the sister of the mom of the party boy. She offered me some apple pie and the rest is history. Seeing her hair today, still brings me back to that day when I first met her, seeing her long and full silky brown locks. Jolene is a Latina woman, nine years younger than me. She's full of energy, not just physically. She's one of the most vibrant and enthusiastic women I've met in my life. It's worthy to mention, that she's very strong with her femininity towards me. I never knew a woman could be this way. She softens up in my presence while complimenting every side of my life. More importantly, she is great with the kids and they love her. After a year of dating, she moved in. We've been together ever since. She can't have children, I won't go into that. But that's okay. She's passionate about her role in our family and doesn't overstep Elena. Not intentionally. Jolene excused herself once to our daughter, because she was worried she was hurting her mom, Elena, after multiple shopping trips together and having so much fun together. My daughter pressed that it's her favorite pastime and she likes to spend it with Jolene, and ever since, they always find each other in their fascination for fashion. The boys make fun of them especially when they started sharing a walk-in closet to this day. Now to when Elena actually met Jolene. The first time Elena saw her, was during picking the kids up. We were, dating some months at the time and I imagine the kids mentioned her name to Elena before that. They told me specifically, but I can't remember enough to quote. Paraphrasing here, it was about how they adored her and she stayed at our house from time to time. That day they met, Jolene came outside to greet Elena. I'm trying to be unbiased here but I could sense the tension from Elena's side as she saw Jolene walking towards her. I should mention that Jolene was her jolly self and finds a way with everybody. But as I said, she's feminine and present, to the point that it surely came as a surprise to Elena. My own mother always jokingly calls out her beauty, by giving her nicknames that emphasize her femininity. Jolene gets shy, I can see why, and honestly, I like it as I agree fully. Sorry, I digress. Back to the moment when they met. So Elena immediately acted in a way I never saw her before. Never. She was overly gentle and ladylike, as to wanting to match Jolene. Jolene was sweet and respectful towards Elena, giving her a welcoming unforced hug and trying, but failing, to keep herself in the background during the social interaction. Jolene just wanted to do the right thing and really, deeply cares for making others not feel bad, that's just how she is. She thinks it's something she needs to work on, but I tell her it's not, and it's what I love about her. While the kids were getting in the car and Elena was setting them up, I noticed Jolene coming towards me and actively refrained herself from hugging the kids goodbye, or helping with the seatbelts, as I could feel her nervously squeezing my arm. But then it happened. When the kids were in the car, one of our sons jumped out while calling Jolene for a hug, the rest followed except the oldest, who was waving from the car. 
During this moment, Elena stood next to the driver's seat and gave me this look, where I could see the deep heartbreak in her eyes, way deeper than what I saw in her eyes, while we were finalizing our divorce with the lawyers present. I never spoke to her about it, but I could read her soul in that moment. Regret and shame, while being utterly destroyed by the sight that I, we, have a strong and healthy family unit, without her. That she was not only replaced, but now the truth dawned on her tenfold. Her kids get to live in a great household as a complete family unit, and her ex-husband, who she cheated on, has a better woman in his life. Better, in every single way. I have to admit. I wanted revenge and I wanted to go scorched earth after I found out. My uncle is a rat for betraying us, but I was more angry at Elena. But it honestly hurt me seeing her, hoping and trying still. At this point I want her to find happiness too. But it wasn't my problem. She chose to chase the tummy tingles, with creepy Uncle Dave. But back to the encounters, because that's not all. It got worse. The first time directly after that encounter at my house, I went to pick the kids up at Elena's. I did so alone, as Jolene doesn't want to make Elena uncomfortable, and Jolene says she rather prepares for the kids just before they arrive at home. I'm there, at Elena's. The kids seem to be too occupied to greet their dad and Elena asks me to talk privately. She doesn't even start normal conversation and straight goes into asking me. You know, they talk about her a lot, but I think it could hurt them if she isn't serious. How serious is it? She knows me, she knows if I'm in, I'm in for the long run. She was just fishing for a reaction. I noticed because she talked in a playful manner and kept a close distance whenever we were talking. I just kept my distance by correcting where I stood. I sighed as to show how crazy and hypocritical her question was. I told her it's serious and I found love, and that Jolene is more than amazing with the kids. I added that she shouldn't worry, as Jolene will be a steady presence, permanently. I noticed a look I haven't seen in Elena, in a very long time, her eyes turning to anger almost unnoticeable, then shortly replaced by sadness, before acting to be happy and relieved. Elena was always talkative when we had contact concerning our kids, so we had this cringy way of communication where I would be direct and short, while she would be talkative surrounding her lessons from therapy, curious and even clingy at times. She then said. You know, I meant what I said, I will wait for you. I will make- I stopped her as she wanted to keep talking, and I told her I wasn't going into it. I told her I hope she finds happiness, but it will never be with me. That she has to find it elsewhere, but not to forget, stay serious, so she doesn't affect the kids in a negative way while trying. And that was it. I didn't give it more of my energy that could be spent with the kids and lovely Jolene. Around six years later, this is serious, I'm not joking. My son came home from his mom and during dinner jokingly said. Hey dad, you know that mom keeps a picture of the two of you together on her nightstand? I told him not to joke about it, as his mother does the best she can. She still has her apartment decorated with our wedding pictures to this day, for more than a decade. Jolene was at the dinner table. But she really doesn't mind. She doesn't have anything bad to say about Elena and neither do I. The kids are grown and they doing great, they still don't know about the details, I'm sure. I'll tell them when the oldest is past 21 and they ask, but I don't want them to hate their mother. They see her a lot and I make sure they see her in the same bright light as I saw her, before all this went down. I've never told my daughter about her drawing. She doesn't remember and I'm not going to link her to the divorce of her parents, or the bad thing her mother did. Elena is great with the kids. She goes the extra mile with them every day, they are her life. She just has to accept that I'm not. Elena is physically healthy and looks that part, she could actually date any man, but still chooses to live solitarily in the same apartment. Never has she brought up anything on dating me again. I don't have to make sure she's still welcome at gatherings when there are some family members involved. She can join freely if it's concerning the kids. Jolene's social perks made Elena open up a bit towards her, and I have seen them smiling together, so that's nice. When kid parties are organized by Jolene at our place, she asks Elena if she wants to help out, other way around less often, but Jolene doesn't expect Elena to ask. I also trust Jolene to keep a healthy distance, as not to become too close. I could send an update if there are big changes in Elena's life. But it could take over five years. Looking back on everything now, I realize that the divorce was the best thing that could have happened to me. It allowed me to grow and become a stronger person. I learned that it's important to trust your instincts and not ignore your gut feelings. 
And most importantly, I learned that life is unpredictable, but it's up to us to make the most of every situation and keep moving forward. Before I end there, I might add a last spicy bit. Almost forgot about Dave. Sweet notorious Uncle Dave, has been in our town all his life. He had everything here. He was a people's person, but all the people he knew while growing up, either don't look at or speak with him, or they do look, and give him the stink eye. But that's speculation. I really never saw him again in person. He found a new passion and it isn't my ex-wife. He doesn't move around as he used to, if my cousins are right. At family gatherings they tell me about how he locked himself up in a small apartment in Wisconsin and doesn't see the sun. The bottom of the bottle is his only friend, and he re-watches everything on streaming services while they check if he's still alive from time to time. Elena and I never talked about it, but apparently, he tried to find her and keeps in contact with family members, by asking how she's doing and if he can get in contact with her. They don't entertain the thought to help him. But this was more than six years ago. I don't know why he fled like he did, but I do know that even when my cousin married, he didn't show up for the wedding. People tell me openly that he isn't welcome, but I wouldn't ask that of them. I'm open to seeing what's left of his loudmouth self, just to talk to him, so I can show him what a real man is. But that's in the past now. And it could be detrimental to the harmony of the whole family. So that's that on the best uncle of the universe. Even though I have nothing bad to say about Elena in my personal life, it does feel great to vent here in an email to Royal AI. He has my permission to use my story. It's my way of giving back, as I like listening to his stories. I'm being intentionally vague on some parts, and I'll add that I will stay anonymous, but I will read comments. I asked him to keep my name out, please respect my decision. I'm curious to what like-minded viewers have to say, but I want to remain a silent viewer. Thank you in advance, thank you for listening to my story. Soft to some, but epic to those who find the ultimate revenge, in being successful. That brings us to the end of this exclusive episode, let us know what you think, what would you advise OP going forward? This is your unique chance, as he will be reading the comments too. If there are updates from OP, I will share them in the comments section. Special gratitude goes to OP, a loyal subscriber from this channel, trusting me to cover his personal story. Be sure to show your vengeful devotion and smack the like button, share with like-minded friends, and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care, and see you on the next one.